Hello and welcome back to the raised bed garden area and to the raised bed project which we started in a previous video so definitely go and check that out if you haven't seen it yet but we're going to continue today and we're going to get these guys filled up and hopefully get some stuff planted because we've got some plants that have been ready to go in the ground for some time now and we've been waiting to get back on this project so that we've got somewhere to put them some peas some potatoes some carrots uh, many things so in this video we're going to fill these raised beds but we're not just going to empty a bunch of soil in there or a bunch of compost we're going to do it slightly differently so can you tell me about what we are filling these beds mm -hmm. with and why so the what is all of the organic matter that has already started to rot that's in our bakehouse that was here when we arrived so we have a load of old logs and old vines and then we've also been collecting anything that we cut off of our trees when we do our pruning that's too big to go in our chipper we have been creating a pile of that so we have lots of branches and things and stuff that we're going to put in the bottom of these beds and it's based on the hugel culture concept but it's not pure hugel culture because hugel culture wouldn't involve a raised bed like we have but the hugel culture concept is you put down some big logs and then you put other mulch and organic matter then you put some topsoil and compost on top and then you plant into the into the top right? yeah and so eventually the the stuff at the bottom breaks down and it feeds all that soil and it will, will eventually kind of go down and you just keep topping it up with mulch and compost um, the rule of thumb is or the rule of thumb that I'm going with is one third of old logs and branches then stuffed in and around that is some some mulch so leaves and whatever else I can find um, and then a mixture of uh, like topsoil with mulch and then a top layer of compost so kind of a third of each our raised beds aren't that deep and some of these logs are really big so we're not going to get it exactly right but that's kind of what we're aiming for and I watched Mark from Self Sufficient Me and he has put massive logs in the bottom of his raised beds his raised beds are like much taller so he could accommodate these really big logs um, and he opened that raised bed up after a year or two years to see what was going on with that base layer it was amazing all the bugs and the decomposition and stuff so i'm really hoping that we get a similar situation here and it's just straight onto the ground in the beds and onto our wire mesh for our vol proofing and yeah as it decomposes it will feed the soil below it moisture still comes up and goes down so kind of an experiment but I don't see why it wouldn't work because I've seen other people do it and it's very successful. Should we get to work then? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, mean, I don't think we have to be very precious about it. No, I don't think we do either. Just yeah. chuck it in. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's quite decomposed. Very decomposed. There we go, so we've got our, our three beds are nicely filled with decomposing logs and vines and prunings and all sorts of stuff, which is cool. And the next step is to kind of fill in all the gaps with leaves and smaller bits and pieces. So we're reducing the risk of it sinking. One of the things I really like about this is A, we're feeding the soil, we're adding material that's gonna hold on to moisture below the surface, which is very good in our very warm dry climate particularly in the summer but also because we've one third to a half filled these beds we don't need as much soil and compost and stuff which is uh, going to save us some money in some places we've probably gone more than a third that's fine I think in total we're probably about a third full so we're going to call it there grab a bite to eat and then come back and continue on So 
so all of this stuff here is mulch from last year's olive harvest. We piled all the branches up and all the leaves fell off and kind of covered most of the ground. We then chopped up the branches to use for firewood, even the small ones for kindling. And then all the tiny bits and pieces that were left over, we ran the BCS over the top, the two wheel tractor with the flail mower and turned it into this kind of fine mulchy stuff. So it's leaves and tiny twigs and stuff like that. And it's all started to decompose already in place. We're gonna stick this into our Hugel culture beds. to work pretty well. Cool. Does it get you a seal of approval? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to work really well. I mean, I think over time... Careful obviously of your rake, my friend. Oh yeah. Over time it will <laughs> definitely it will, sink. It will definitely sink a bit, yeah. That's, that's so, understandable and to be expected. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Trying to be a little bit more precise. Oh, okay. I don't know why, because I'm usually not very precise exactly. about anything. That's worth it. Can you pass me a shovel though? Yeah, sure. Cool, so all of our beds are filled with logs and brown material, carbon rich material. My hope is that even though we're putting lots of organic matter in here, we won't create a big hot compost pile because we're not really adding anything green or nitrogen rich. And I try to combine nitrogen and carbon in my actual compost pile and it doesn't always get nice and hot. So obviously some work to do there. And so now we need to think about soil, which is like the next layer. And we have quite a lot of this, which I will call spoil rather than soil. We dug all of this out for a French drain and leveling the uh, around the house. It's about 20 or 30 tons of stuff, but it's got zero nutrients. It was very compacted. It's mostly clay. There is a bit of soil in there, but it's mostly clay. So I don't think we're gonna use this which means we probably need to dig up some topsoil. But this may be a blessing in disguise because along this whole path that I'm walking down right now, we need to excavate for a power cable. So I've actually started the process down here. This is very much a work in progress. So we're gonna be excavating all the way to the end of this path and then over towards where the mulch pile is. That's where our solar panels are gonna go eventually. And we need to feed a cable all the way back to the house. So uh, I might start digging this up now and we can use the spoil as topsoil for our beds. Definitely need a bit more soil. 
got plenty more land. <laughs> yes, I don't have plenty more energy, so... Aha, uh -huh, it's time for the compost. Looks heavy. This is why I've been building my muscles. <laughs> I think this is what has built your muscles. Oh, that too. Yeah. Oh. I'll go get the rest. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Okay, so we're at the compost stage, the final layer before we do the planting. Uh, planting may have to wait till tomorrow because it's, uh, it's been an exhausting day, although only half a day because we started just before lunch. Uh, let's get some compost in these beds. I'm not entirely sure how much we're gonna use. When I do our uh, beds in the main garden, the no-dig beds, uh, for a new bed, it's about 350, 400 liters per bed. For a refresh of an existing bed, it's more like 100 litres per bed. And the beds are 80 centimetres wide and 5 metres long. So we'll see how much we need to go in here. Probably quite a lot, but we just picked up 2,500 litres of the stuff. So we've got plenty. Are you done yet? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So far it's almost like one bag per square meter. Yeah, exactly. Which is pretty good. While I don't love that all this compost is coming in plastic bags, it does make it easier to move around. And of course, we'll be able to reuse the bags for something else in the future. Okay, so I think we're done for today. We're not done entirely, but we've done all the layers for filling the beds, which is good. What we're gonna do finally is water it in so it will sink a little bit. Then we'll put a little bit more compost on tomorrow, water that in, and then we'll plant tomorrow. But I thought it would be interesting just to do a bit of a, how much did this project cost? So I don't know all the numbers off the top of my head, but I will put them on the screen for you. So we had all the logs, they were completely free. We had 18 fence posts. We had about three meters of hardware cloth or wire mesh in the bottom of the rectangular bed as a vole protection. The fixings that we used were 140 millimeters long, I think. We had a box of 100. We've probably used about half of them. What else? P-trellis fence stuff. We have a bit of fencing here. Uh, we bought a roll of 10 meters. We've used about two meters of it. And then we've got the compost. So far we've used 10 bags. They're 360 each. And so that's 36 euros worth of compost so far. That's it, right? And my many hours of labor, which are very expensive. And of course our labor, which is 100% free and mostly enjoyable. Hello, good morning and welcome back. And we're gonna do some planting today. We've let our compost water in and sink a little bit overnight. And we're gonna add a little bit more to the bed in the middle because we're gonna plant some root vegetables in there. What I probably should say is we're gonna experiment with planting some root vegetables in there because we don't know if it's gonna work and we're absolutely fine with that. Because there's quite a lot of the uh, Hugel culture material in there, we don't know if there's enough space for things like carrots and potatoes, but we're gonna find out. We'll probably grow something, but they may just not be very big, very long, very straight, uh, but that's okay too. I think we can maybe get six potatoes in here. Yeah, because we're only looking to get small ones. Small ones this time. Yeah. three of each variety? I have three of each variety, yes. Instead of doing trenches or drills or whatever, I'm just gonna whack these in kind of wrist deep and we'll see what happens. We'll probably need to add some more compost because there isn't a huge amount in here. Oh, I was gonna add more compost, wasn't I? Yeah, you were, but you I'm just gonna put add it on top. I'm just gonna add some more compost on top as well. Mm. 
We've had many Portuguese people tell us that we should cut the potatoes so we get more of them. And that's a great idea, but we don't need any more. Yeah, We've got loads already. So many we can eat. There's only two of us. But when and we get Kylie to... loves potatoes, just... but... When we get to making vodka one. from potatoes, that's yeah. a different story. Making vodka. One day. Yeah, maybe. It's on my list. So I've got 42 onions in here. What? I did a slightly tighter spacing in here just to see in the name of the experimentation and more onions. <laughs> How many onions do we need? It's <laughs> a good question. This is in addition to the 75 sets that I planted over in the main garden. We also have onion seed. I think we've got some white onions, some spring onions and, and some brown ones as well. But since we've got over 100 onions in the ground at the moment. We uh, maybe we'll save the seed for another time. I use a lot of onions. Onion soup coming up. Onion soup. Caramelized onion marmalade. Yes. So let's do some carrots. So this packet even tells me what to do. So outdoors thinly where they are to crop, 1.5 centimeters deep directly into finely prepared soil, which has already been watered. Done. Allow 30 centimeters between rows. Early sowings may benefit from cloche protection. I don't think that's necessary here. Seedlings usually appear in 14 to 21 days. Thin by harvesting young carrots evenly from the row, allowing the remainder to grow on. Let's do that. I'd be very interested to see how this works, or if it works. Well, that's part of the fun. Tiny seeds. I'm not very good at this. Uh, can you explain yourself? Just felt like doing some digging. <laughs> um. I have too many strawberries left over, even to replant my planter boxes back with strawberries. So, in the name of experimentation, I thought I'd do a strawberries in the ground test. <laughs> you seem <laughs> thrilled about this. <laughs> it was not on my plan for today, but you know, living the dream, right? Includes lots of hard work. So you want it sticking up? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I like it. And then we just... Need to, can we just have a look at those ones? If we've got any decent corner ones there, so we know... Mm, maybe this one. Oh, oh. For your corner. <laughs> I just want to place the corner ones first. What you want. Good powder. Okay, let's start with that. Okay, so I think we are done with this project, which is very exciting because we like ticking things off the list. We have completed the filling of our raised beds and some planting. Really the only one that looks any good is this one here because it's got some actual plants in it rather than just some seeds. But yeah, I think a successful project. And of course we'll circle back in some time in the future to let you know if it worked or not, which is entirely possible. So my strawberry transplant operation went a little bit bigger than I was expecting. Um, I had hoped that they would all go in one bed, but I 
sorely oh, no. <laughs> underestimated how many I had in uh, the planter boxes. So I'm doing another experiment. Um, so we have the Hugo culture strawberries here. And then I did a bit of a dig experiment and put some compost on the ground to see what happens. And then I transplanted some back into two of the planter boxes that I had because I didn't want to throw away those plants and maybe I'll keep on top of them a little bit better this time around. And the only thing left to do is to get um, some straw to put on top so that the strawberries don't sit on the wet compost. So, yeah, successful, I would say. Very good, so lots of strawberries, which is excellent because I like strawberries. Um, in our vole-proofed raised bed, we've got our carrots, our potatoes, and our onions, and I've also put more onions and more carrots in the main garden as well so we'll be able to do a bit of a compare and contrast i mean none of this is like super scientific but it's just interesting to be able to look back on what we've done here and then see in the future what we get in terms of harvests so that's the experimental aspects of it that we enjoy and then finally we have this bed here which we've actually put nothing in today because we haven't got stuff ready but this is going to be mostly like a salad garden so we've got some chard some spinach some rocket some lettuce some beetroot some spring onions will go in here as well and uh, this is something that will probably turn over quite a lot and keep it full and fresh uh, with some succession planting so that we can always come and pick some nice tasty salads and of course we've got lots more gardening stuff to come in the future. We're going to be doing a big expansion of the no-dig garden um, all the way over to the, the, the water tanks and the well in the background for all our tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and we'll also be expanding out this way later on with pumpkins, courgettes, some squash and some corn in the future. So we have big plans for this area this year. Stick around and see what we get up to in the future. So I think that's it for this video. We will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye. These peas are going crazy. There's about two plants I think.